on site. And those of you who are joining us on Zoom, how lucky we are that we get to be together and to worship and to just celebrate what it means to be a community of faith and to come together and to ask God's blessings on us. And for those of you who might be visitors today, please know we are so excited you're here. It just makes our hearts glad when we know that we can welcome, um, welcome you into our midst. And we hope that you will love and enjoy this service as well. So I invite you just to take a moment to look around you and say hello to whoever might be near you. And for our Zoomers to do the same, just to say hello to somebody and just to connect. There you go. That's the way we have community together, right? And Zoomers, let's wave to our Zoomers and say hi. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Right. This is very different than when we exchange the peace partway through the service. To exchange the peace partway through is not about saying just hi to everybody. It's about how we offer the peace to one another. In the early church, um, very early church, when the community got together to worship, the first part of the service, just like ours, is about hearing the word of God and having some edification about it and doing some prayers. But at halftime, if you weren't a baptized Christian, you were invited to leave because you there was concern about how you might understand the Eucharist if you didn't really know about it. And so the peace was done after everybody left as a way for us to greet one another those of us who have been baptized. So that's the purpose of the piece, a little different than what we do as we start our service here at St. Bartholomew's. So keep that in mind when we get to the piece. But now it's just great to have you all here. So as we continue with our worship, I invite you to stand if you are able and let us join in singing, Come We That Love the Lord. <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
I invite you to join me as we pray together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Be seated. How lonely sits the city that was once full of people, like how like a widow she has become, she that was great among the nations, she that was a princess among the provinces has become a vassal. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile with suffering and hard servitude. She lives now among the nations and finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. All her gates are desolate, her priests groan, her young girls grieve, and her lot is bitter. Her foes have become the masters, her enemies prosper, because the Lord has made her suffer. The multitude of her transgression the Lord has made her suffer for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children have gone away, captives before the foe. From daughter Zion has departed all her majesty. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture. They fled without strength before the pursuer. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
reading from 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose, his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has been now revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought his life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed as a herald and as an apostle and teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do, but I'm not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust and I'm sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Just a wonderful reminder that Children's Word is back and meeting downstairs. So if there are any wee ones who want to go be part of that, we encourage them to leave now. It's a great opportunity to just learn at a wonderful level. And as they venture forth, I invite us to join in standing if you are able and to join in singing hymn 528, Lord, you give the Great Commission.
Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at this table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of our Savior. Gracious God, open our hearts and minds to your word. May the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock, my rock, and salvation. Amen. Amen. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus comments on people who have faith. What he has done throughout scripture, we have kind of an upside, not quite a balance, but he rebukes the disciples for often showing little faith. But he highlights and brings up those who demonstrate having faith in the healing of those who he's ministered to along his journey. In Luke, Jesus talks about the life of discipleship. There are challenges that he knows that his followers will face. So in rebuking his disciples, he wants them to learn and understand what it does mean to have faith. When Jesus saw that they had little faith. When they were sailing across the lake and the waters had become rough. So the disciples, like anyone else who might be in a boat going across the lake, you might be afraid of drowning. So as Jesus calmed their fears of drowning, he was also calming the waters. But Jesus said to his followers, where is your faith? That is in Luke 8. But when Jesus saw the faith of those who brought the paralyzed man to be healed by Jesus, he said to them, friend, your sins are forgiven. So yes, it does seem like a little bit unbalanced at times where Jesus rebukes the disciples, but yet highlights the others. In this morning's gospel, the disciples say to Jesus, increase our faith. Now they had just been speaking and listening to Jesus in his teachings where he told the disciples about the demands of discipleship and being able to forgive those who have sinned, of understanding that if someone has sinned and they ask and say that I'm sorry, forgive them. Well, this may have seemed a bit difficult for the disciples to grasp. So they are asking for 
and increase in their faith? Are there times when perhaps you feel like you might not have enough faith and you want more? Well, in Jesus's reply, he replies with a parable as he teaches the disciples about the mustard seed. Now, a mustard seed is no bigger than that of a pinhead. So as I was thinking about the scripture for today, I thought about maybe getting the McCormick bottle or little jar of mustard seeds to just show you how tiny that seed is. I remember when I was a child growing up that I had a bracelet with a glass globe and inside it was a tiny mustard seed. But to me, it didn't look that tiny. I didn't attach a deeper meaning to it other than what I was told and what I heard, that faith is like a mustard seed. Faith is like a mustard seed, but a mustard seed, no matter how tiny it is, grows into a flourishing bush or even a tree. Now, yes, the people closest to Jesus were rebuked for not having a healthy faith. The disciples did not quite understand that. But what they needed to understand and have more of is an opportunity to put their faith into action, to use even the tiniest bit of faith that they had to go forth and do things because that's exactly what Jesus wanted them to be able to do when he was no longer with them, to go forth and spread the good news of his teachings. A mustard seed kind of faith is a faith that isn't content to stay small. It is one that will grow. It is one that will take root and continue to grow and grow. It is a faith that comes from hearing and believing the word of God. However small, it will grow. These very words challenge us to understand the meaning of faith and to have faith and to live it, to understand the goodness of God in our lives and to have complete trust in God. Holding on to our faith is a challenge. So I had this small, mustard seed in a globe on a bracelet. Today, my go-to is a t-shirt that someone gave me. And on the front, it says, faith over fear, faith over fear. So holding on to my faith, putting on that shirt just gives me an extra sense of knowing do I have enough faith to overcome some fear? So this morning I told a short story of going to a destination in South Baltimore where I had to drive down 83. And as I thought about where I was going to turn, I didn't want to go as far as President Street. I chose an alternate route because I remembered what happened at President Street with the squeegee men and boys. That didn't mean that I didn't have faith and trust that I would be okay. But sometimes, even with our faith, we act different. We use some caution to what we do. It doesn't mean that we lose our faith it means that we might act on it a little different. We need to find opportunities to act on our faith, using the gifts and talents that God has given us in how we live into our faith. How do we do that? What are the things that we can do to live into our faith? It's not necessarily that we need more faith. We need to be faithful. 
And it's also possible that we need a different kind of faith. Maybe what we need is the kind of faith like the mustard seed spreads contagiously wherever it is dropped. It grows persistently and cannot be easily destroyed. Our faith should not be easily destroyed. Hold on to it. What is it that we need to work for to be faithful servants and to trust our Lord? Come together in prayer groups, praying with one another and for each other. Some of us meet here regularly to pray with each other for the needs of this congregation and this town and the ministry that is around us. We can promise to use our gifts. We promise that we will give offerings and we take and use those offerings to help others to show the faith that we have. Our spiritual gifts help to build up the body of Christ. We have each other to come together in community, to come together here to pray together. In coming in, in community, excuse me, in coming together in community helps us to live out our faith. We promise our service. And it's not a service that we should be looking for thanks and praise and high honor. It is what God expects of us. He expects of us to go out and be servants in the world. God did not come into the world through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to do any more than to serve us, not to get high praise and to be lifted high up on a pedestal. He was lifted high up on a cross for our salvation. And yes, trust in God, be faithful. Have that contagious kind of faith that can help others and help to share the good news. This is true discipleship. God is calling us to be faithful, to trust him, to do the work he has given us to do not to be ashamed to go out into the world and witness what we have learned and what we have heard. Not to expect high honor and praise for the work that we do. Be humble and know that we are fulfilling what God expects of us. We are spreading the work of the tiniest seed, having the faith of the mustard seed. Trust and obey in the words and the examples of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I invite you to stand if you are able and let us reaffirm our faith in this God as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, our God from God, the light from light.
The prayers of the people are found in your service bulletin. Please face each other across the aisle. Let us pray for the whole human family and for the world of which we are a part. O oh God, you are unresting in movement, serene in the stillness, inspiring zeal while counseling patience, calling us from paths that lead to ease and indifference, that washed anew each day by our baptism, we wait for your coming, not hardening our hearts, nor forsaking our faith but vowing dedication in mind and in will and lifting hearts and hands in holy obedience to your will. Lord, in your mercy, that leaders of all segments of society, government and military, business and industry, <clears throat> all popular and social endeavor will reject impotent rhetoric and will speak the truth for the honest edification of the kingdom among us. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. that we today, with those in our families and in our communities, those who suffer from illness and disease, loneliness and despair, and those we name before you, silently or out loud, may bask in the warmth and joy and love of the spirit. Remembering Lucy Marshall, Vince Massiglia, Shirley Nathan Pulliam, Celia Vismel, Ray Ziegler, Larry Brown, Sandra De Silva, Mary Warfield, Phoenix DeVale, Irene Hardy, Stephanie Brooks Wiggins, Tijon Cox and family, Rodney Michael, Brian Wagner, Tim Wolf, Fred Bowling, Catherine Williamson, Zach Shevashevsky, Gordon Pache, Mary Lou Frelick, Bonita and Donald DeVelle, Vicky Lynn, Debbie McClellan, Patricia Williams, Sharon Selick, 40 West Assistance and Referral Center clients, those affected by the coronavirus, the homeless, and any other we name at this time. For the victims of Hurricane Ian. John Skirtis. Susan Clark. Lord, in your mercy, that those we criticize and scorn will become our brothers and sisters, and that we make the first step toward reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, open our eyes and our hearts so that we may rejoice in all your blessings, remembering the fourth wedding anniversary of Christina and Adam Boer, the third wedding anniversary of Jeffrey and Irma Piccarello, the second birthday of Jackson Quentin Blackert, and any others we name at this time. My Lord, in your mercy, that the memory of our loved ones and of all the saints will keep us steadily on the path to which you point us. Remembering Sandy Litzinger, James C. Williams, Jr., Jill Lynn Wrigley, Margaret Johnson, and any others we name at this time. Ken, Lee, and Don Yeager. Brandon James. Joe Jason Bogusang. 
Thank you, Tom Barnes. Lord, in your mercy, hear these words, O Lord, as you hear and understand the unspoken thoughts of our hearts and minds, and grant their fulfillment through Christ our Lord. our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy. mercy on you, forgive your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able, and as we recognize our faith in this community, let us greet one another. May the peace of Christ be always with you. Peace, everybody. Peace and blessing Peace. to one and all. Hey. Peace, Peace everybody. everybody. Peace. Oh, now we can talk. Peace, Peace TJ. Peace, Scott. Peace, Peace everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, Kate. Peace and blessings. Peace, Peace everybody. Peace, Mary Lou. Peace, Lydia. Peace. Peace to everybody. Peace. Thank okay, you. Peace, Lydia. Peace. Peace. Hey, Eleanor. Peace. Peace. Peace, Susan. <laughs> I am Verena. Peace, 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 Bryce and Ray. Peace. Hi, Susan. Hi. Hi, Shirley. Hey, Susan. <laughs> I see Shirley's got a swimming pool on hers. Can I get my video to work this morning? Mm -hmm. Hi, Hi Mickey. Shirley. Hi, baby. You look great. Good morning, everyone. Good yes. morning. Hi, girls. Hi, Eleanor. What a joy to welcome all of you again here to St. Bartholomew's Church. We are so blessed to have a community of faith and of the ability just to be together and to um, celebrate God's presence in our lives. We had a wonderful blessing of animals yesterday, and I am delighted to say that every single snake that showed up went to Deacon Neva to be blessed. <laughs> Actually, no snakes showed up, so she was off the hook. But one of the things we talked about yesterday was in the face of this powerful storm that has wandered its way through Florida and up along the East Coast, so important that we keep in our thoughts and our prayers all, uh, all aspects of that which has been impacted by this storm. Yesterday, we were giving thanks for the blessing of all of God's creation, not just us humans, but all of God's creation. And it got us thinking about the impact of Ian. And so I just wanna mind, be mindful uh, with everyone today that it wasn't just human beings that were affected by this storm that there were stories of people who saw fish swimming along on a road. And I think about the animals and the flora and fauna who were impacted, must have been scared out of their minds and impacted by this storm. So as you pray for the recovery uh, from Ian and any disaster like that, remember to hold on to all of God's creation and not just those of us who are human. Although I wouldn't mind if you pray for my brother and his wife because they live in Venice, Florida, just saying. I hope you take a quick look at the what's happening in the back of your bulletin. There's so much that we have the privilege of doing together at St. Bartholomew's. I want to mention that the D group is meeting today after services over in the youth house. 
We have a wonderful spread of ages this year from junior high to senior high. And so I hope that uh, if you have a youngster that would like to be part of that, or you know somebody who would have some interest in it, not to hesitate to reach out and invite them to that. I also wanna mention that as we live in a world that is sometimes really complicated and difficult, sometimes it's really helpful to also take a chance to just breathe and have a moment of quiet meditation. Our meditation, groups meet, our meditation group meets on Monday evening in the chapel at 7.30. If you've never done meditation, they will gladly show you how. It's not that complicated most of the time, and I encourage you to join with them and just to have that chance for some quiet, reflective time. I also want to mention that our Sewing Bees group is going to start meeting now in the parish house. So what says here that um, they're going to meet on Zoom, that's true, but you're also going to be able to meet in the parish house. So beginning Wednesday, they will not only be in the parish house, but they will also be available on Zoom. So just to... That's the knitting group. Yeah, didn't I say that? Oh, well, all right. So <laughs> I'm only the rector. I have no idea what's going on in my congregation. <laughs> Okay, sorry, it's the prayer shawls. I'm talking about the sewing bees will continue to meet at Irene Hardy's home on Tuesdays. The prayer shawl group um, will be meeting on Wednesdays in the parish house at uh, seven o'clock, but you can also join on Zoom. Um, just, hmm? C. Lee. C. Lee, okay. <laughs> All right, one other, couple of other quick things. I just want to mention the Hunting Ridge is going to have their annual pumpkin patch. It's great fun. So I encourage you to go over and have some fun with them. And then I also want to mention a couple of other things. Next Sunday is Pledge Sunday. We are so blessed here at St. Bartholomew's, right? We are so blessed with God's grace, both as a congregation and as individuals. God, <laughs> thank you. God blesses us with so much. And stewardship at this time of year is our ability to give thanks to God for the ways that we are blessed and to think about the ways we want to share a portion of that back through time and talent, but also through our pledge. And stewardship is going to be gathering next door after the service to have a chance to fill out, package up some stuff for us. But also next, next Sunday is a really important Sunday and Sarah, who is chair of that wonderful committee, is a couple of things she might want to just mention to you. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, I'm Sarah Schrader, and I um, invite you on behalf of the whole stewardship committee to come celebrate Pledge Sunday with us, ideally in person, but if you can't make it, don't worry, we're going to find you. Uh, we wanted to have a ministry fair this year. We've been apart for so long, and um, some of us might have been hesitant to sign up for anything new or change what we're doing or just to seek out information. So we, we put together, or we're trying to put together, a ministry fair for next week. Come in person, we'll be in the parish house, and we hope to have a, a representative from each kind of organized ministry opportunity there to speak with you. If you don't have any idea about what you want to do, you might like donuts. And our new... <laughs> Our new theme and draw is do not forget to pledge. So um, just on a practical uh, side, as Flo said, we're putting packets together. If you've never um, been a part of the pledge process, um, you will get probably in the mail within the next few days, hopefully before next uh, Sunday, um, a packet of materials from us. And in there will be um, a letter from the stewardship committee there will be an envelope to return um, your pledge if you like. Ideally, bring it in here. We'll, uh, we can actually see it coming. You can put it in the offering plate. If you can't make it, that's fine too. You can mail it in. But I want to point out too that there are two separate pledge cards. And the reason for that is your time and talent pledge will be distributed to lots of people who will know to get into contact with you. And your treasure pledge will not. It will go directly to the assistant uh, treasurer and uh, be kept in confidence there. So there are two separate cards. Make sure you look at them both. Anything else? No, that's an excellent uh, question. Nine o'clock in between the two services. Okay, thank you, Sarah. So again, this is a wonderful time of year to celebrate the 
the amazing blessings that we have from God and the way those blessings pour out in our personal lives, but also in this congregation. And those blessings are part of what we have the privilege, the spiritual privilege of sharing back in the world, both here at St. B's, but also out there. Your time and talent is essential. We couldn't do what we do here without your time and talent and your contribution, but also your treasure is a part of that. And so our ability to celebrate is really critical. So I hope that you'll think about that when you get your packet and also have a chance to think about how you want to offer back to God's glory, a part of how God has blessed you. Another ministry that we're doing right now is uh, with, through the Gospel Justice Group is to start doing some mentoring with youngsters over at the Green Street Academy. And Amanda's gonna share a little bit about that. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this Thursday at 6.30 p.m., those of you who are interested in mentoring a um, sixth through eighth grader or a, um, an 11th or 12th grader at Green Street Academy, there will be an orientation from 6.30 to 7.30. And if you have questions about that, you can find me in the parish house for a few minutes before I head over to youth group. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, I think that's it. It's, a, it's awesome, isn't it? We have all this stuff that we do and we're invested in. So I hope that that just fills your heart and your spirit with joy um, uh, and gives you just a sense of God's power. And so let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a thanksgiving to God.
to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundation of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb you brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. 
Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and to give himself for us, a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, bursting with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with blessed Bartholomew and all your people, into the joy of our true eternal home through christ and with christ and in christ by the inspiration of your holy spirit we worship you our god and creator in voices of unending praise as our savior christ has taught us we now pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. For 
those of you who are at home and have something to drink to share and something to eat to share, let us offer this prayer for what you have to eat this morning. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, you bring forth bread from the earth and make the risen Lord to be for us the bread of life. Grant that we who daily seek the bread which sustains our bodies and we also hunger for the food of everlasting life. Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And for the drink you have to share this prayer, blessed are you, O Lord, our God, creator of the fruit of the vine, grant that we who share this drink, which gladdens our hearts, may share forever the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Those of us who are here on site, as always, we welcome everyone to this meal that we share together. You can either come here to the rail or go to the back. And if you want to place your hands out and receive a wafer, you can also ask for a gluten-free one if you prefer. You can eat just the bread, that is quite sufficient, or you will find a chalice or a silver bowl. The chalice is a common cup to drink from. The silver bowl is to take your wafer and then tink that in the wine and receive that way. For those of you who would like to receive the laying on of hands for healing, we invite you to just duck out that side door Take a sharp left and then a sharp right and go into the chapel where someone will be there to greet you and also to offer you communion there as well. And now remember that these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
Now I invite you to stand if you are able and let us offer our thanksgiving to the Lord as we pray together. In union, O oh God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, wherever that may be, we offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. No matter how we have received you today in our meal of communion, whether by sacrament or otherwise, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us in your grace, Holy Spirit, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, now and always, wherever we are. Amen. these party words from Dom Holder Camaro. Come, Lord, do not smile and say you are already with us. Millions do not know you, and we who do, what is the difference? What is the point of your presence if our lives do not alter, change our lives, shatter our complacency, Make your word flesh of our flesh, blood of our blood, and our life's purpose. 
Take away the quietness of a clear conscience. Press us uncomfortably, for only thus that that other peace is made, your peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you and keep you this day and evermore. Amen. forth into the world refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our vision and mission as a congregation. We will, with God's help, be a vibrant faith community that is a blazing beacon of God's transforming love in the world. God is calling us to take righteous risks. We accept this call and will respond by seeking and serving Christ in all people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.